Understanding and using the unit circle. First thing I want to say is if you did not watch the video on explaining about the unit circle, you need to stop right now and go back and watch that. It's a little long, but it gives you all the background information, and you probably wouldn't even need to watch this video if you watch that video. These are examples right from your assignment. Remember that the sine of an angle, the sine of, say, an angle theta, uh, is y over r, that the cosine of an angle is x over r, and the tangent of an angle is y over x. This is key to understanding. And if you're not sure what's going on here, go back and watch the other video. So when I uh, look at sine, uh, it's y over r. Look at the, the, down at the axes below. Remember that y is positive up here, and y is negative down below. x is positive here. And over here, x is negative. So just that information is all we need. When I look at uh, the uh, angle in standard position, and I know that sine is y over r. Remember, r is always positive. So I can look at my quadrants, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And I know since y is positive in quadrants 1 and 2, sine will be positive in quadrants 1 and 2. So, where will sine be negative? Sine will be negative then, since it's y over r, and y is negative in quadrants 3 and 4. It will be quadrants 3 and 4 for the first one. Where is sine positive? Again, y is positive in quadrants 1 and 2. So, that would be 1 and 2. Where is tangent positive? Well, tangent is y over x, right here. And y over x, y and x are positive in quadrant 1. And in quadrant 3, y over x, y and x are both negative. And since a negative divided by negative is a positive, in quadrant 3, tangent would be positive because y and x are both negative. Whereas cosine positive, well, cosine is x over r. x is positive in quadrants 1 and 4. So, and r is always positive. So that would be 1 and 4. Cosine is negative. Well, cosine, again, is x over r. x is negative in quadrants 2 and 3. Tangent is negative. Well, where is y over x negative? Well, in quadrant 2, y is positive, but x is negative. And since you have, have one negative, it would be negative in quadrant 2. And down in quadrant 4, x is positive, but y is negative. And again, since you have one negative, uh, y over x would be negative. So quadrant 4. So this all goes back to just the quadrants and understanding which quadrants make an x and a y positive and which one make an x and a y negative. On this next example from your assignment, remember that the unit circle always has a one radius as you go around. So here's my angle in standard position, that's one, and I go around. So as I go around the unit circle, uh, it says, in which quadrant is sine negative? Well, the sine is of theta, of my angle. It's y over r. r is always positive. So sine is negative. Where is y negative? Uh, right down here, y is negative. 
So in quadrants three and four, sine is negative. So oh, that would be three and four. And tangent negative. Well, the tangent of theta is y over x. So I need just one of either y or x to be negative, not both, because that'd make a positive. Well, I, in quadrant two, uh, y is positive, but x is negative. So quadrant two. And in quadrant four, x is positive, but y is negative. So quadrant four. So to answer the question, uh, in which quadrant is sine negative and tangent negative, uh, the only one that meets that is right there. That would be quadrant four. This next one is very similar, just a few more answers. Um, here's my x and here's my y. Let's describe the combination of signs. In quadrant one, uh, we have both positive, x and y. In quadrant two, we have x negative and y positive. In quadrant three, we have x negative and y negative. In quadrant four, we have x positive and y negative. So this is what we need to know. So where is sine less than zero? That means sine is negative and cosine is also negative. I'm looking for a quadrant where the sine is negative. Now remember sine is y over r. R is always positive, so we really just care about y there. And that the cosine of theta is x over r. And same thing, r is always positive, so where is x negative? I'm looking for a quadrant uh, where sine is less than zero and cosine is less than zero, meaning they're both negative. Which quadrant has x and y both negative? That would be quadrant three. On the next one, I want the sine to be positive, greater than zero, and the cosine to be negative. So sine's going to be positive, meaning y is going to be positive. That puts me up in 1 and 2. Cosine's going to be negative. Uh, that would, the only one that fits there is 2 then. On C, where is sine greater than 0? Positive. And where is cosine positive? So I want sine and cosine to both be positive, meaning I want x or y for sine and x for cosine to both be positive. Now well, that's quadrant one. X and y are positive in quadrant one. And for the last one there, where is the sine less than zero? Uh, where is it negative? So where is y negative? And the cosine greater than zero. So the cosine is going to be positive, making x positive. So y is going to be negative. That puts us down in three and four. And cosine is going to be positive. That puts us in four. These questions are really quick. Let's blow this up a little bit. You'll like this because it, all you do is look at the unit circle and write the answer. So I'm looking for 5 pi over 6. On my unit circle, 5 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6 is right here. And I know that the sine of an angle, in this case 5 pi over 6, is y over r, and r is 1. So I, it's just y is all we need. And look at 5 pi over 6, and y is 1 half. Cosine of theta, the cosine of theta is x over r. r is 1, so all we're going to look for is x. 
Uh, so at that same point, 5 pi over 6, x is negative root 3 over 2. Negative root 3 over 2. And the tangent of theta, this is the one where we got to do a little bit of work. The tangent of theta is y over x. So I go to the 5 pi over 6. I put the y up top. That's 1 half. This is the tangent of 5 pi over 6 in radians. It's 1 half over negative root 3 over 2. So that's 1 half times the reciprocal, because we're dividing, we multiply by the reciprocal. That's 2 over negative root 3. The 2's cancel, so this is 1 over negative root 3. And we'll rationalize. And normally we move the negative to the top. So it would be negative root 3 over root 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. So negative root 3 over 3. Last example, 7 pi over 4. Let's look down on the unit circle and find 7 pi over 4. Right, right here. So uh, again, sine of my angle is y over r. r is 1, so we're just looking for y. The y of that coordinate is negative root 2 over 2. The cosine of theta is x over r. And x of that point is root 2 over 2. The tangent of theta is y over x. So the tangent of 7 pi over 4 in radians is the y up top negative root 2 over 2, the x below, root 2 over 2, so negative root 2 over 2 times the reciprocal, 2 over root 2, the 2's cancel, the root 2's cancel, and we get negative 1.